Well, here we are again. We find ourselves back online, but we are still going to sing Joy to the World. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of music just as we started worship. We are really sad that we've had to go back to this. Um, my name is Beverly Malden. I'm the pastor at Gold Hill United Methodist Church, and I had an encounter who I learned Saturday that um, started having a few tests, uh, I mean symptoms, and um, of the virus, and she went to get tested, and so just to be safe, uh, we're going to um, quarantine ourselves for the next couple of weeks. So you will find us here online, and hope that you will still gather with us. Um, we want to remember the many who are suffering from COVID, who are still suffering with uh, the disease, that caretakers that are taking care of them, and the families that are separated still. Um, we, we do want to remember all that. We want to remember our homeless, as it has been so icy cold the last couple of nights. Um, if uh, Jane is supposed to be starting or anything warm next week, so if you have anything you want to drop off for those that are cold, if you will call me or let me know somehow um, through Facebook, if you will send me an address, I will come pick it up or Jane will come pick it up because I know that she never stops working and she will keep this collection going even through the pandemic and it, the weather is presenting itself right now as blankets and coats and hats and socks and mittens are all needed. So if you can contribute to that cause, just let us know through Facebook. And right now in this awkward time of me trying to preach here at home instead of in the church, um, I ask you to give me a little grace and um, realize that this is just as awkward for me as it is for you, but we are going to make this work with the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God. Uh, let us go together separately in prayer right now. Holy Father, you are always so willing to be with us during the best of times and the worst of times and for this very moment in the fullness of time you are here we thank you everlasting God for always staying near we ask that that you forgive us for our many sins that you help us to be more like Jesus we ask that, that you use us as a vessel and keep us in the center of your will, even in this dark time that we are finding, some of us are finding ourselves in. Help us, Father, to keep the joy of the Lord in our heart, to keep the Prince of Peace within us so we can have that peace that passes understanding even in the worst of times. Father God, we lift up your holy, holy name. We praise you as the sun rises to meet the sky in the morning. We rise up to meet you and your tenderness and your holiness. Father, I ask that you be with all the lonely and the lost I ask that you be with the homebound. Help them to know that we love them and we care about them. And we, we wish to be with them soon. We're trying to do no harm as our founder John Wesley taught us. And so we are keeping our distance and it's very hard and awkward for us. But please let everyone know that can't be with us um, help them to feel your love and your power as they worship with us as they do their devotions 
and as they are with their family or with their friends. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we can have the privilege to enter into your throne room and to talk with you and to give you our burdens and to lay them at your feet. Father, at this moment, we lift up our personal prayers and petitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, Father, we ask, I ask that you be with us during this holy time of worship that we are about to have. I ask that you open our hearts to hear your word. I ask that you bless each person that is worshiping with us this morning. And I ask that you remove me and pull, throw your Holy Spirit in so that you will be glorified through the scriptures and through the words that you have laid on my heart to share. And now, Father, at this time, as children of God, we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So our scripture this week comes from Galatians um, chapter 4, and I'm going to be reading from verses 4 through 7. And Paul writes, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive the adoption as sons. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this last Sunday of 2020, and is anyone else shouting praise the Lord with me? Um, this year is finally coming to an end. I'm reminded of the words of Dickens in the tale of two cities. He wrote, it was the worst of times, it was the best of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. For most of us, we have never experienced such a disruption as we are experiencing in our lives this year. We just heard the words of Paul to the Galatians, when the fullness of time comes. It's good to remember when hearing these words that God's timing is always perfect that he is never a moment or even an instant late. This fullness of time that Paul spoke of, it came when every word of prophecy that should have been given had been given, not a word less and not a syllable more. When every ear that should have heard all the receptive minds of faithful servants, the fearful hearts in need of encouragement, the wavering doubters, even the stubborn fools and the hardened rebels who railed against the rule of the Almighty God, every person destined to hear heard the word. The best of times, the worst of times, the fullness of time came and the word was made flesh. It was made flesh for the salvation of many 
the destruction of others, but in every instance for the glory of God. The fullness of time found the perfect tyrant on the throne in Jerusalem. It found the perfectly ruthless emperor reigning in Rome. It found the ideal carpenter laboring in Nazareth. It found an exact band of shepherds resting on the hill and a designated governor giving an exact sentence. It found stargazers in their Middle Eastern observatory gathering gold and incense and myrrh that were created by God in the beginning of time, resting in the earth for this exact moment. In the fullness of time, every creature was in place. Every star, every planet, every grain of sand, every atom in the universe was in its perfect location. And the chosen maid of Galilee heard and obeyed in the fullness of time. The best of times, the worst of times. When the fullness of time came, sin was as filthy and foul as it ever could have been. In the fullness of time, hell was waiting to devour the human race. It had begun in the garden and it was not giving up. The worst of times, the prophets were long dead and the promises were nearly forgotten. When the fullness of time came, the temple of Zion was corrupt and vain and the teachers of Israel were strangers to the grace of God. Darkness and ignorance had much influence over mankind on just the right day in this fullness of time. When the fullness of time came, so did the best of times. God sent forth his son. God sent his son, eternal, majestic, sovereign, and sinless in unblemished holiness. The power of creation, the word of all being. As we have talked about for the past four weeks, our omnipotent, omniscient, all-wise, all-seeing, worthy of all honor and glory, all worship and praise, robed in splendor, ancient of days, the source of life and peace and love, the Lord of glory, stepped down from above, and the fullness of time had come. When the fullness of time came, in the worst of times and in the best of times, God sent his son, born of a woman. He was wrapped in some homespun cloth and laid in to sleep in a common feed trough we call a manger. God was born to a common world with common pests of fleas and flies and mosquitoes into a world of pain and disease and death. He was born into a world of guilt and despair, a world where nothing very often seems fair. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. He was born under the law that God had given as a standard of life the law that sin had twisted into an instrument of death, the law so simple and yet so severe, the law granted as a gift and accepted in covenant, totally just yet consistently broken. The law unbending, undeniable, inescapable and pure, the law, our blessing, we turned into a curse. The law that was never kept until the lawgiver came in the fullness of time. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son in order that he might redeem by a spotless life of absolute integrity, redeem by acts of gentle mercy and unwavering love, redeem by the courageous proclamation of uncompromising truth, and by the demonstration of God's power imparted through a faithful servant and unembarrassed joy in the company of sinners, by outraged righteousness in the presence of hypocrites, and by unflinching obedience to the demand of his life, his body, and his blood. 
by his silence when he was ridiculed, slandered and slain, by his surrendered soul, we were redeemed by three days in the grave. He redeemed us by his holiness in his mother's womb, by his peaceful righteousness in the silent gloom, by his triumphant shout when he burst from the tomb, victorious and glorious, unshackled, unstained, sinless as he was. When the fullness of time came, it was the best of times because God sent forth his son that we might receive adoption as his child. We, broken, undeserving, impure, unable, unknowing, unsure, crippled, and blind, rebellious in mind, we who disowned him and discounted him, we who redeemed, he redeemed us and he gave us his name. And if all of that were not enough, in these best and worst of times, in this season of light and the season of darkness, there was a spring of hope and a season of despair. God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. I heard these words in Easton's Christmas pageant in a song. And, I, and what I remember the words being were, who could imagine who could have conceived that the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings, the glorious God, perfect in purity and power, whose name is holy, 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 would be born in a manger. And now we call him Father. The angels sang on that Judean night. The shepherds ran seeking the wonder that, in, that was in sight. And heaven and earth were at long last in sync when God sent his son to fulfill the fullness of time. Therefore, we are no longer slaves, but we are his children. Therefore, how do we respond? How do we live in this new freedom? What should we believe if not hopelessness, homelessness, hatred, and fear? We should believe in the love that sent his only son to earth for our sake. How do we hold this treasure of love that is so rare? How do we express the joy of freedom, the wonder of adoption by this king? How do we say thank you for what we could never imagine? For this transformation from guilty fugitives to grace blessed children of our Abba Father, we respond with all struck gratitude. In the fullness of the time, God sent his son to redeem us, not, not as an anonymous crowd, but each as a person that he knows and he loves. He redeemed and adopted us in the same way that he created us, unique, distinct, especially cherished and known for who and what we are, his beloved children. Therefore, Live the life that he has gifted you. Live as one freed from the shackles of sin. Live as he guides and enables you. Live by his grace, free from the law. Live with him in a relationship of unbreakable love, unfettered forgiveness, and unassailable acceptance. Live as one who is reborn, no longer a slave, but a child, who is beloved and blessed, entrusted with privileges and empowered with the resources of heaven itself. And if you are a child, then you are an heir through God. If you are God's child, you are an heir, is what Paul is trying to tell us. You have dignity, you have status, you have entrance to the throne room of the Creator. You are a prince of the kingdom and a pre priest or priestess on earth. You are an heir of eternity and an heir of righteousness of Christ, of his glory and home. This year, this Christmas, it has been the worst and the best of times. The worst of 
what we each have experienced with separation, sickness, sin, and death. The best of it of the year is waiting to be rescued from all of the worst for better days. I have seen actions of great sacrifice and generosity this year by others that have given me hope in mankind when the world present, presents itself cloaked in the worst. In this challenging year of 2020, on this last Sunday in De December, I ask you, do you know that you are a child of God? Do you know that you are his heir? Do you know that you have been rescued from slavery and sin and despair, that you don't have to stay there anymore? Have you gained this new life of his spirit that only the Holy Spirit can bring? Have you shouted Hosanna lately to welcome your king? The answer is yes. You are a child of the king. Our Abba Father has adopted and given you all the rights of an heir of a king would have. In the worst of times, God is still writing love letters to our hearts. Can you hear his spirit calling you today? The fullness of time is right now for all of us. In these best of times and in these worst of times, Jesus has come to make us new because he loves us so much. For unto us a child is born, and he was called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Prince of Peace. As we wrap up this awkward year, let us remember that we are children of the King, and let's go into the world loving as God loves, caring for one another, and showing the glory and love of God to all we meet. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we'll see you next year in Gold Hill soon.